<clears throat> well, good morning. It's nine o'clock, and it's Monday, and I'm starting a new week. Uh, starting a new. Uh, we can always refocus on our faith. Starting on a new week, you know, God makes all things new. So we need to um, to just uh, evaluate our life and see how we can refocus our our um, affections toward Jesus. And let's not adjust, let's not attach Jesus to our life this week. Let's make Jesus everything this week. And um, and I'm speaking to myself on that. Also, I'm not just saying that for because I got it all figured out. I'm saying it because I need to hear it myself. Um, let's fixate our our uh, thought life on on Jesus. Um, even you know when we're at work, um, we can fixate our mind on Jesus in the time in moments that we can uh, we can spare moments like whenever you you're in between something at your job and you have a moment to take a breath think about Jesus think about you know pray to him at that moment and see what what happens and, and pray to, maybe you can share your faith um, at times where you, when you're at work let's not make work something separate in our faith because I believe that's what most people do we we fixate ourselves that our job is our job and and you know Jesus has to wait on us to to uh, to have either Bible time or go to church or or whatever he wants your he wants you 24 7 so when you have a chance to think about him at, you know at work Excuse me. Think about him. If you have a chance to read your Bible, in you know, in the middle of the day, read your Bible, even if it's just a few verses. You know, read it and fixate and meditate on the Word of God. If you have a chance to share your faith and step out, do it. Don't worry if your job's going to get mad at you. Don't worry about that. Just share your faith and see what happens. I mean, I can just imagine when, you know, people get to heaven and, and Jesus, you know, we're, we're having to, um, you know, tell him everything about our life. He's going to ask all these questions and he's going to ask, what about your job? What about, you know, the times when, you know, you left me out and it's like, what excuse are we going to really give him? You know, I'm sorry, Lord, I was too busy. I mean that's that's not an excuse that I would really want to give Jesus. So I really, you know, think about, you know, just think about your, um, you know, your spare time you have throughout your day. Do you spend it on, you know, uh, the internet, or do you spend it on um, Facebook, or, or, you know, you know, anything like that, or do you can you know? And I'm not talking about. I mean, you use Facebook as a way to share your faith, um, you know, and, and really live your faith out. So when people look at your Facebook um, feed that they're not going to see, you know, horrible things on there that you're saying and then talk about Jesus. That's that's being that's playing the hypocrite. And that's the last thing we want to do is play the hypocrite into in, into a dark world right now. Um, I wanted to share something. Um, I, I went out. This weekend, um, I spent Saturday um, uh, out and about, and I wanted to go share my faith. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. It's not easy sharing your faith. You really have to get away from yourself to do it. You really do. Everything in you is telling you not to do it. Everything. And so whenever you are out, and you know, when I was out and about, I had um, I had a bunch of Bibles. A small, uh, some Bibles are called the Invitation Bible, and it's just the New Testament, not no Psalms or Proverbs. And then I have a bunch of smaller ones that are uh, the New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. So I'm, I had about 20 Bibles, and I have and I have a whole bunch of tracks um, that I give out. So I decided what I was going to do is put a track in the Bible, and also I have a, um, a phone number, a business card. And put my business card in the Bible with my phone number on it. In case anybody had any questions, they could they have a number they could call to 
to ask or whatever. So I went out and <clears throat> I was in Beaumont. Um, it's a town outside of my little town that I live in. Uh, and I went over there and I went to go to the hospital to see a, a man that, that had a heart attack. He's a friend of the family. And I went over there and I, I went to go see him and I um, wanted to pray with him and just tell him that we love him. And then after that, I was like, I'm going to go give these Bibles out. I mean, what better thing to give out than the Word of God, you know? So I'm like, I'm going to, they've just been sitting in my bag, and I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and just give them out. So I know uh, a fishing hole that I have um, that I usually go to in Beaumont is where the uh, Beaumont, uh, the bus stop is. And it's downtown Beaumont, and there's lots of homeless people that live down there. And I'm like, well, there's usually a lot of them gathered up a lot of times. So I'm going to just go down there and see what I can do. So I went down there, and there was a bunch of people. I thought it was a church giving out clothes. And there's a bunch of homeless people. So I said, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to go give out Bibles while they're giving out clothes. So I get out, and I walk over there, and I just start handing Bibles out to people. And a lot of them I was handing them out to was the people that were giving out clothes. And they were looking at me like I was absolutely crazy. And, and, and I didn't think anything of it. I was thinking, you know, maybe they're just thinking because they're giving, you know, they're part of a church. They don't need a Bible. And I handed it to one guy, and the guy looks at me and goes, man, he goes, I don't want this. He goes, you know, I'm an atheist. I said, you're an atheist? He goes, yeah, it's, you know, no one here is in part of a church top setting. So I pretty much gave out a Bible to people that don't believe giving out clothes. And it convicted me because people that don't believe in God are out there giving out clothes to the homeless. And of course, what's, what's missing is eternal life. The, is, you know, they're fixing their problem for the moment, but the, the, the problem for eternity is not fixed. So I was there at the right time. God had me there. It was a divine appointment. The guy gave me the Bible back. And I gave him the track in the Bible. I said, please just read this. He says, he goes, and this is the typical answer I hear from a lot of unbelievers. I've done the church thing and I don't, I, it, it did nothing for me. I went to church my whole life and it did nothing for me. And sadly, most churches that people go to is a seeker friendly church. And whenever the seeker friendly runs out, Everything else runs out. Everything else runs out because Jesus is not the forefront. And that's, I wanted to talk to him. I was like, man, that would be, just come talk to me. And he, he was like, no, he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I just give this to somebody that might want it. I just don't want it. And he was a very nice guy. So anyway, I thought that was a good story to, to share because you never know who you're going to give out tracks to thinking that it's going to be, or Bibles and thinking it might be someone that's um, a Christian, and you come to find out they're they're giving out clothes, and they're atheists. So it's like you know we you never know. So that's just a, a quick story that I wanted to share. But the main thing that I wanted to get across today is when it, to share your faith, we can make twenty five hundred excuses about sharing but why we cannot share our faith and the biggest thing that we need to learn is that it's not easy it will never be easy to share your faith the the biggest obstacle is you in it your your own flesh because what you what you are um what your your natural self which is being renewed all things are being renewed in you. You need to remember that. But what the biggest obstacle is you, your mind. You're afraid. Most people are afraid of rejection or are afraid that they won't have an answer. And you don't have to have an answer just to hand somebody a track. You don't, usually the track has the answers on it. You don't have to have an answer when you hand somebody the Word of God. The, the answers are in the Word of God. And, and you have the greatest tool of you have the gospel and you have the your you have your um, uh, testimony that you can share and it's just it's just a way to, to get out 
and and be proactive in sharing your faith. And you never know. I spent three hours Sunday at our local park. I had Bible set up. I had free coffee set up. Uh, I had a sign that says "Good, uh, good uh, free coffee and and free um, free good news." And I, I was like. I was there, I had music playing, I, I was waving at people, there were lots of people there, no one came and spoke with me. I mean, I would say hello, I, t- I would tell them, hey, come get you some free coffee, and I had all the, the you know, I had it all prepped, you know, I had hand, hand sanitizer and all that there, but the idea of it is, is that I, I didn't, I talked to one man that was there, and that one man was a friend of mine that works there, and and we got to talk and fellowship some, and he, he came back a couple of times and, and talked with me. But other than that, no one else came and talked to me. Even people that were coming out of church did not want to even stop by to see what, you know, what, what I was doing. Um, so it's, it's not easy. And, you know, you feel like I, I look like a fool. That's okay. It, I'd rather look like a fool for Jesus than a fool for this world. Because that's typically what we do. We want to be a fool for this world. We will do anything and everything to have things of this world. To be part of this world. But the little things like going and sharing our faith, it's like, it's hard for us because we feel like we're going to look like fools. We have to get out of ourself. It takes a lot of humility to get out there. And it's not that I'm saying that I have a lot of humility. I fight it every time I'm out there. I'm fighting it. But then I think about Jesus, and I think about what he did. I think about his walk, to, his walk up to Calvary. When he, got, when, when he had to get on that cross for my sins. And he was, he, he was humiliated. He was crucified naked. He was beaten and bruised. He was sitting up there exposed to everybody. And yet we have problems about sharing our faith because we're afraid that we don't know what to say. You can tell people, you know, I mean, just give them a track. Give them the Bible. Ask them if they know the word, if they know the gospel. And if they say they do, if they truly know it, they would rejoice in it. If they get upset, they don't know the gospel. That's an easy telltale. So I just plead with everybody right now. It just to share your faith some way or somehow. Share your faith. So... I like the song by um, Casting Crowns, Nobody. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. Just think about that. Meditate on that and just see what what happens and see prayerfully, hopefully there's, I I mean, I'm trying to make, hopefully the word of God will convict you over, over this, but the idea of it is, we need more people out there sharing their faith and being and being um, pr- being active um, with that part of our walk. So think about it. Go share your faith with someone and tell them that Jesus loves them. God bless you.